this is a, an important historical document that had never been seen really since World War II. Uh, a soldier brought it home. He was in uh, Berchtesgaden, which was Hitler's home. It was the one place that he considered uh, uh, really a home more than anywhere else. Uh, the soldier was there. He picked it up as a souvenir, having no idea of its historical importance, and brought it back. Several years ago, uh, he contacted the Monuments Men Foundation, his heirs did, and brought it in. There were actually two of them that they had. And they were albums, leather brown albums, uh, that had works of photographs that were uh, presented to Hitler to demonstrate the great uh, accomplishments of the looting organization known as ERR, Eisatstab Reichsleiter Rosenberg, and their uh, theft of works of art from collectors in France, in particular Jews. These works were identified by inventory numbers. Uh, the Rothschild family was assigned an R, and each work of art had a number that was the object number that they'd stolen. In the case of Rothschilds, there were some 6,000 objects stolen from the Rothschilds. And keep in mind, sometimes an object represented 10,000 coins in a coin collection, so it was far, far greater number than that. The monuments officers found 39 of these brown leather albums at the castle of Neuschwanstein in early May. Monuments officer uh, Jim Rormer, whose character was played by Matt Damon in the film, um, arrives with information that he'd been given by Kate Blanchett's character, uh, Claire Simone, or Rose Vallon in real life, who makes this information available to him. In fact, she's basically given him the map to the, the treasure map. And he arrives at the castle uh, very worried not only about protecting the works of art, but also eager to determine that the documents that the Nazis had assembled that evidenced the theft would, could be retrieved before they were destroyed and allow them to know which pictures belonged to which families. Rormer arrives and finds 39 of these albums that have been assembled to be presented to the Fuhrer, and they were at the castle of Neuschwanstein. What's fascinating about the album that I'm going to show you now is that this album was one of four that were found at Hitler's home in Berchtesgaden, some four hours away by car in a completely different area. Now, this was the first album, in fact, of the four that the Found Monuments Men Foundation has since discovered, uh, all from different either soldiers that were still living or heirs to the soldiers uh, where the soldiers had passed and the family members contacted us about these things. When this first one was brought in, uh, it came in and really confused us because we knew about these 39 albums. We assumed uh, as the National Archives where the 39 albums reside today, we assume that the albums were numbered 1 through 39. And on their online information, that's what it indicated, 1 through 39. And they're part of the trial, in fact. We have file footage of the trial at Nuremberg with all of the defendants in the docket. The judges are presented with these 39 albums as part of the evidence on the portion of the trials pertaining to theft during the war. And you can see them flipping through these albums, amazed and horrified about the degree of premeditated looting that's taken place here and the fact that this evidence has survived. This album then, when it arrived, confused us because if all 39 albums were at the National Archives, why were we looking at album number six and eight? And it didn't make sense to us. I had no question that the album was authentic, but we couldn't figure out how this worked out. So the following day, I flew to Washington to the National Archives. I had them pull the 39 albums, and we looked through them. And each of these albums looks the same. They all come in this brown leather, uh, brown leather case. Uh, many of the albums that are at National Archives don't have the album cover. Uh, they've been lost or destroyed over the course of time. And inside the album, this one is happily one of the ones that's the most intact, although the cover has come separated. Inside the album are these pockets, and some of the albums are missing the inventory sheet. Ours happens to have it. And this inventory sheet uh, shows the work of art. It shows the uh, object number of the collector that it was taken from. So R is Rothschild, uh, SEL is Seligman, uh, DW is David Weil, and then you have the object number next to it. So the first object listed on this is R457. That's the 457th object stolen from the Rothschilds. And then it lists the artist and the work of art. Uh, and this is one of only two ways to be able to identify what the album number is. So if this is missing, then you rely on the cover page of the album. And in this case, the cover page is there, but many of the albums at the National Archives didn't have the cover page. In this case, it says, Isatzab Reichsleiter Rosenberg, uh, photo album number six. And so when I went to the National Archives, interestingly, they did not have album number one. 
The first album they had was number two. Their albums went all the way up to 48, but there were a number of numbers in between that were missing. Some of the albums also were A and B. So we think now, and we've since determined that there was a, a Nazi interrogated who said, I think we made like a hundred of these things. And so we know many of these are still missing. And I believe out there, probably in the hands of American soldiers that brought them home as souvenirs or their family members, exactly as this happened. This is album six, and the National Archives didn't have album six or eight. And we've since found albums uh, 13 and 15. I'm sorry, we found six, seven, eight, and album 15 since then. Some of the albums have paintings. What was particularly shocking when we first opened up this album was the very first photograph that we saw. And it's a photograph of a painting by a French painter named Larguillier. Um, not a particularly uh, well-known painter, but certainly a, a prominent and important one, a portrait of a lady. And it was stolen from the Rothschild collection. And when we looked on the inventory sheet, it was the very first work of art in the album. But we recognized this painting because on the front cover of my book, Monuments Men, um, you can see the soldiers, including Jim Rormer, Matt Damon's character, standing on the steps of the castle of Neuschwanstein, some four hours away where this album was found, carrying the actual painting down the steps. So these albums were presented to Hitler by the looting organization for him to flip through like a mail order catalog and show Mein Fuhrer, look at the great work that we're doing. These are all the things we've confiscated for you to, have, to enjoy looking at or to make selections for your Fuhrer Museum. And he would look at these things for relaxation, and it was hardly surprising that many of the albums that weren't at the Castle of Neuschwanstein were at his home in Berchtesgaden, where they naturally would have been. But the works of art that were in the album were at the Castle of Neuschwanstein. So the odds of having this first album appear, much less have the first work of art in here be the painting being carried down the steps in the front cover of the book, even though the book was the that selection of the photograph was years before, you know, it's really an astonishing, astonishing coincidence. Um, since then, uh, we found two more of these albums, a total of four that we found. All the albums that we have found have been donated to the National Archives. There are a total now of uh, 42 albums at the National Archives. This will be the 43rd that we will tender uh, delivery to them on June 6, 2014, um, the anniversary of D-Day. And um, we're still looking for these albums. We know there are at least eight to ten more. We actually think there's probably about 60 more. And it's one of the opportunities that people have that, to help us finish and complete the mission of the Monuments Men by writing the story. Uh, George and Grant and the studio, Sonny and Fox, have been so supportive of our efforts with the foundation by creating a toll-free number for the public that sees this film and wants to help complete the mission of the Monuments Men to help us, contacting us by 1-866-WORLD-WAR-II-ART or WWII art um, We're interested in illuminating the path home so these objects, whether they're an important document or a painting or work of art, can be returned to their rightful owner. And it's a great, great portion of the story and something we're very proud to be doing with the studios and with the actors, in particular George and Grant.